Okay, yep, that was that was an error there where I <laughs> I was looking at my phone and I thought this has been going on for a long time. I had in fact looped the uh, the countdown, which is a, a mistake. I do not recommend. It quickly becomes quite complicated. I hope everyone is well. Happy Saturday. Um, I'm more well, a minute early. Yeah, I hope everyone's good. I'm very bored today, as I noted I would be yesterday. So uh, I thought I'd do one of these, hang out, talk graps for an hour or so. There's some prize fighting on tonight, I believe. So yeah, you're going to be here for an hour or so. Um, I watched some of the professional wrestling last night in order to be prepared for this for this extravaganza. So I had some things that I'm aware of happening that I could talk about. But uh, But yeah, good times. Here at Holbert headquarters, I see people filing in. Double countdown, yeah, indeed. I look, folks. Even the even a veteran of uh, of my experience level blows us on occasion. You know it happens. Okay, let me uh, because I was doing that double countdown business. Let me let me do my my link tweeting and such. Uh, but until then, oh how evening evening Tristan um, got a beer in the middle in front of me just in time for the big yes main event, brother. I should know, of course. I feel like I kind of buried the lead there. I was thrown off by the uh, the double countdown. I should know that today is is actually a big day in pro wrestling, right? I mean, it's not just Collision Day, which obviously is a huge thing in its own right, but it's also the day in which Nick Nemeth heads to Puerto Rico for what has got to be one of the most momentous occasions in in recent memory. Um, what, an, what a time it's going to be. The NWA World's title is on the line. I've seen some allegations that is not true. It is, I can tell you, it is actually true. He's going to be twin the World's title tonight. So, hell of a time over on fighttip.tv. Use the uh, code um, wantedman420. <laughs> do not do that. That's not a real code. But nonetheless, it's a hell of a time. I think I'm actually going to tune into, uh, into that whole shit. Maybe not live, though, because I'm getting old. I can't do it anymore, guys. I must say, for those of you that have been with me for a long time on these programs, you know that we used to do the late night grin at 4.05 a.m. here in Great Britain. And uh, I can't, like, start for Dynamite now, which ends at 3. I'm, I'm washed. So you get what you get, I suppose. Happy Collision Day, Boris. Um, unfortunate that you are Boris, but nonetheless, I hope you enjoy Collision. Mr. Joe Holbert, I have a strong opinion on the Buck segment that I feel will get me blackballed of the industry. I hope you're having a good day. So I assume you didn't like it, would be my my guess. I feel that would be the one that would get you uh, get you blackballed. But look, man, I mean, you know, we all like unpopular things and dislike popular things. It's not really a big deal. It is what it is. It was a couple minute segment. You feel freely. Tell me your take. I'm intrigued. Uh, howdy, Jason. Rice man, one of the great late night grinners there. As is Jason, I should read. So, but if I just, Rice man was behind the, uh, for anyone who saw the great um, bootlicker uh, Ibu graphic that we got some good mileage out of for the Golden Grinnies, that was the work of Rice man. So I thought I should single him out there. Um, indeed, it's been a while. It's been a while. Wonderful. Wonderful. Charlie's in the chat. Charlie of WrestlePurious. Now, Charlie's name is not comma of WrestlePurious, but I was simply doing that to be, you know, to, to give some context. That is, of course, Ibu's official name. Uh, this is not his return match, that him being uh, Nick Nemeth. This is his third match back, because I think his first two have been for TNA and they haven't aired yet, right? So I think he worked um, Zach Wentz. I think he worked which is hilarious. And then he worked with, uh, last night, you wrestled Trey Miguel, I think. But neither of those ever aired. So technically speaking, we can just say it's his, it's his return match. We could just do that. It makes sense to me. <laughs> Meme source. I'll take it. That's fine by me. Um, I know it's way too early, but if Forbidden Door includes Samuel this year, I'd love Mystico, Daniel Cinderella. My goodness. Dorada and Osprey would be something, wouldn't it? I think Osprey would have some big ideas for that one. Uh, I still haven't seen the Dorada match that got five this past week. I need to catch up. Um, Mystico, Danielson, uh, Suji and Roosh. Roosh, Suji match could have a fun LIJ law story. It sounds good to me. I saw that Ibu got a lot of shit for that take about, like, kind of the forbidden door happening to, you know, welcome other people through the door, so to speak. 
I actually thought he was right, honestly. Um, I don't know. Where do you guys stand on that? Like, where are we at with Forbidden Door in a world where potentially Okada is going to just be an AEW wrestler? I'm not saying that it's like, I'm not even saying it to be disparaging of New Japan. It's just, you know, it certainly is a different landscape now than when we were all longing for that alliance. But um, nonetheless, one second, folks. Okay. <clears throat> Is also Kyle Anderson's birthday. Is it? I think his birthday's. I saw some debate about this, you know. I'm not going to check it here because I feel like my computer will explode. But um, Finn Balor appeared to dunk on the allegation that it was his birthday. There seems to be some debate around this topic, which is a big story. Someone should really delve, delve into it. HBK Tanahashi dream match. My God. One of Tanahashi's favorites, right? One of his favorites. Good evening, Dukes. Um, this is the aforementioned Bucks take. Here it is. I've never hated the Bucks. The only, uh, only for people in the no gimmick does not move me at all. And I don't know what the ultimate payoff is if Punk isn't there. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they redirect it, right? It'll be interesting to see how they uh, focus in on on Sting. I think it could. There's ways it could work where it very very much the Punk stuff is like in the background. Um, so. I think they'll be okay. We'll see. There's definitely versions of it. I'll say this. There's definitely versions of this gimmick that I think could get out of hand. Through one segment, I liked it personally. Indeed. We had quite the night in the uh, the LNG Discord. It was quite the time last night. <clears throat> God bless. What's your favorite bad match to watch? Um, there's one that my brother and I loved very much. G1 2015. Toriano and Doc Gallows. You're seeing what you're imagining in your head is exactly what it was. But for whatever reason, the way that we watched that match, the time that we watched that match, it just tickled us. It popped us. Now, it has to be noted that that was around the time I was new to that product. So I probably just thought the, the you know, thing was, was you know funny for a while. But uh, <laughs> we definitely watched that match like five to ten times which is really outrageous. So there's an answer. Uh, beyond that, anything WCW. I mean, there's so many bad WCW matches that I've watched a million and one times. The Monster Truck match, like, good Lord, man. That's a masterpiece. So, yeah, WCW is the host of a lot of those. Um, <clears throat> what else we got here? Evening, Joseph. Good evening. Has your local government declared January 19th for national holiday to celebrate the return of Pete Dunne and British Strong, Strong Style yet? Man, i got to be honest. I'm just... I was way off on this whole thing in that, like, I didn't realize people cared, but they really do care. And not only do people care on the internet, they care in the... They cheered last night. They went crazy. They said his name's Pete again. Go Pete. It's amazing. I mean, people really give a shit. So, I mean, I don't care. And they have not made it a national holiday. But I will say, it is, it is great to see people care to this degree. I mean, I'm really happy for him, honestly. I mean, yeah, people are connected to him being called Pete. So, good for Pete. Good for Pete. It did pop me that uh, um, Ibu last night referred to Pete. He, he said they gave him a fake name, <laughs> which did pop me, because I'm pretty sure both of them are fake names. But... Admittedly, Pete Dunne is much, much better than Butch, which is an incredibly unfortunate wrestling name. But so good for Pete. Good for Pete. Uh, as a fan of the young guys, they can make it work. Simwell would make things a whole lot more interesting, though. As you know, in regards to the uh, the Forbidden Door, that's Novi's take. Yeah, I think that's um. Yeah, I, and again, it's not a case of like throwing away the dynamic of AEW New Japan, right? I just think maybe a little bit of an extra hook. An extra hook could be intriguing. Uh, Charlie said, I think it's still really easy to book because US, US audiences have a better perception of New Japan talent than given credit for. However, would love CMOL involvement. And that's a good point, right? You've got uh, guys like Ishii, for example, even Shingo. Honestly, the US audience loves those guys, right? There's so you can definitely kind of there's some flexibility with that. There are still some matches that sell on a lot of matches that sell on how great a match they could be. What's interesting is this throw this out as a little bit of a game here as we uh as we talk graps. I I'll get to some of the stuff from the title at some point. 
this is currently things of that nature, but let's assume Swerve Strickland is the champ going into Forbidden Door, which I think is a fair assumption. My question for you is, who should Swerve Strickland, who's, his, who's your priority, AEW World Title, Swerve Strickland versus who from New Japan Pro Wrestling? What do we think, folks? I'm intrigued. Okay. Because he's an interesting style matchup, I think, for a lot of guys. Okay. I saw you call uh, Alton Solo. First, when did Solo stop wearing boots? And secondly, how bad is the Graves and Patrick's du Patrick duo? I don't make them watch any SmackDown again until that booth is changed. Um, yeah, that is really unfortunate, that team, sadly. I'm sure Kevin Patrick is a lovely fella, but he's just... He just doesn't seem to be a natural pro wrestling commentary. It happens, it is what he is. I'm kind of amazed in the least spiteful way possible that he's been given this much run in that role, honestly. They're usually pretty cutthroat with that thing. I guess it's a different regime, so maybe. Uh, saying that, they were quick to move on from Jimmy Smith. So, um, yeah, they're bad. Solo's been wearing the boots for... It's been a couple times since I, I've seen him wear them for, for a while now. Not a while, but like... It's been uh, at least a month or so, I'd, I'd guess. But um, I did see Randy Orton and Solo Sokoa, which was a very funny wrestling match. I mean, they did like kind of a sprint, but they put an ad break in the middle of a five-minute sprint, which is firstly gross. But, you know, so they did this kind of, I think they did an ad, I may be misremembering, but either way, then they did like, Randy made his comeback out of the break. Jim Uso got him, came down the ramp. And the finish was, for anyone who didn't see it, the finish was quite hilarious in that Randy had his back to Solo and he's looking at Jimmy or whoever at the ramp. And Solo has the, you know, he has the spike ready, which is a thumb for anyone who doesn't watch WWE. His, his thumb's like this, he's ready to go. And the idea, of course, is it's like, the, you know, he's behind you kind of pantomime thing. The crowd's gasping and terrified because Solo Sokoa's got the spike, which is a thumb. And Solo, he comes up behind Randy and the people are, are very scared and nervous and he turns Randy and Randy just RKO'd him. I mean, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't even, he didn't do anything to him. He just stood there with a the spike, turned him and ate an RKO. I was, I was baffled by this. It was, it was very funny. I mean, Randy seemed happy with it. He very loudly thanked Solo for, for, the, for doing business. So quite the finish there on SmackDown. Um, it's like a squash. It was really weird, but I don't think they have a lot of faith in Randy's gas tank, unfortunately, which, I mean, he's very big, so, you know, good for him. Um, <clears throat> I feel that with Osprey and Okada becoming AEW regulars this year, having a well added to the show this year will give an added kick and allow New Japan to get their young stars ready to face Okada and Will years later. Yep. Absolutely. It could be good as like a just a hook for this single show, you know. Still sad about the Seth news. Yeah, man, it's a bummer. Um, I, you know, like, I think stories like that go beyond being like a fan of someone. Like, I'm not a big Seth Rollins fan, but like, good Lord, man. I mean, that there are wrestlers I actively dislike that I would never, you know, wish that on necessarily because that's just, that's brutal, especially any injuries at any point are, are awful. But, this timing is like the worst possible timing. So it sucks. Hopefully he's okay in terms of, <clears throat> we know he's not okay, but I guess what I'm saying is hopefully he's feeling uh, up to the task that apparently he's going to be taking on because it sure seems like he's going to wrestle. Um, whether he should or not, I mean, I generally am against working hurt, but if ever there was an occasion, I guess this would be hit, right? I mean, <laughs> As dumb as that is, and as, as wrestler as that is, I I understand it. So hopefully Seth is hanging in there. <clears throat> My favorite things in wrestling today are the old guys still being the best on TV. Legitimately looks good. Oh, I'm sorry, legitimately looks good. Nick Aldis is just money, and Samoa Joe might be the best he's ever been in 20 years. It's wild, man. The uh, don't make them like they used to, right? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's uh, especially hilarious for two of these examples of Orton and Joe is that like they're kind of while they're in particular form, it's like, uh, you know, they're doing the same stuff in a lot of ways, right? They're in great rhythm and they're really over, but they're not reinventing the wheel. 
they're just playing their hits and it, they still sound as good as ever. So it's pretty cool. <clears throat> Bruiserweight chance. Good for Pete. Good for Pete. Okay. What else we got here? We'll be watching the eventual DIY British Strong Style Tech Title match that goes 35 minutes. Um, well, I, look, I'll say this. I watched the DIY match on Monday. They had a good match. So I'm not like, I don't want to be super dismissive. 35 minutes is a little aggressive, but, you know, DIY can have good tag matches. I don't really care, but, you know, they can have good matches. Now, I actually was kind of trying to piece together the DIY thing in my own head when I was doing the match guide. For anyone who missed it, the match guide was on, uh, you know, covered this this Judgment Day B-team versus DIY match. It was the last match of the guide. And I was trying to figure out when I jumped from, I think this DIY stuff is good to, I do not want to see these fellas ever interact again. I was really trying to like isolate because I was in New Orleans for the famous takeover that had their first match against, not their first match against each other, but you know, the, the first feud match against each other. <clears throat> the one with Champa came out with no entrance with his first match back after the injury, so on and so forth. And that was a hell of a deal. That was red hot. I mean, that was a big thing at the time. And I just think it was that summer, right? They wrestled two more times that summer. One of them was like not the idea. I think they were supposed to work with Malachi or they were supposed to do something else and things changed. But it is wild to me how kind of the perception has swung on them, including for myself. I'm not, you know, saying anyone's wrong to have changed their mind. It's been just, just been an interesting ride. And now it seems like they're kind of coming back out of it again on a positive way. So we shall see. Yes, Pete Dunn is called Peter England. This is correct, which is very funny. Okay. We've got swerve opponents here. We have Shingo, Hiromu. See, I think we've got to do Hiromu and Darby, to be honest, but Shingo seems to be the... Charlie's got Shota. I wonder when Shota and Mox have an, inevitably have their... That would be a good program for New Japan, honestly, right? To kind of like bring that toughness, to, you know, continue that kind of thing that Osprey was doing with Shota. Him and Despy. Uh, Swerve and Shota also have one there. Look at Shingo seems to be the pick, yeah. Zack Sabre Jr. Charlie and I are still working on our campaign to get Joe and ZSJ in there, so we'll see. Sonata. Well... Okay, some Gabe Kid love too. A um, little bit bummed that the Mox announcement was a match. I'm not entirely interested in. Hopefully, he takes the mic after and gets a Joe program up and running. I think that's what's happening. So, I think I think you're going to be. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen here, folks. I'm not scooping. This is not even an educated guess. This is purely guess. However. I think Mox is getting a win for a reason tonight, and I think he's going to call out Samoa Joe. I think on Wednesday, maybe, they'll do a head-to-head -head promo, and then they'll do the match the following week or somewhere in that range. Again, just a guess. Don't be mad at me if it doesn't happen. But he's getting a win after being advertised that just Moxley returns. I don't know. I, I think that's where we're headed here. But <clears throat> Samoa Joe was very deliberate about kind of the way he – the way he had that shit talk about Mox to me felt kind of deliberate. Maybe I'm just being a, a, a fanboy. I don't know. Um, what else we got here? Let's do it. Charlie, throw the throw the match in the chat. Or, Charlie, do you want to come on this this program? We could do like Wrestle Purist flagship bonus like I do with the Iber of Wrestle Purist. DM me if you would like to. If not, uh, just put the matches in the chat and I'll I'll pretend I'm talking to you like you're on the show. Um, <laughs> what else we got here? I was too. I was disappointed. There wasn't as many, you know, nerve holes in the solo match. It was a shame. <clears throat> SmackDown was quite bad last night. Pop. I thought they tried to cram too much into the show. It was very Russo McMahon esque, building the show, and the payoff is two three minute matches. I only saw the uh, the uh, the solo one, so I can't speak on that. <laughs> I saw this. Yeah, the Kabuki Warriors probably getting the tag belts. That's cool. 
Um, one second, folks. My stream yard. Okay, let me link the great Charlie of WrestlePurious, which again is not her official brand. I'm simply doing my duty as an advertiser here. Um, we'll get we'll get some some WrestlePurious action going on here. All right. Okay, let me scroll up. Uh, where was I? SmackDown was bad. That was it. Between Jericho and Sidell running back 2010 Raw and Rampage on Rampage and both TK and Triple H playing back black and gold hits, best hits on TV. Why is 2010's US wrestling nostalgia allowed to be a thing? <clears throat> I don't know. It's a little bit, it's a little spooky, to be honest. It's a little bit offensive. We'll be unreal. Um, there was a very funny spot in Jericho and Sidell in the first like minute. And I just kind of was like, well, I'm going to, I'll come back to this some other time. I don't know if I will. Apparently it was good. I, but the start of it was less so. So, yeah, I don't know. People have nostalgia for all graps, right? Like, I mean, just wait. Some of the things from, I mean, people already do it for the pandemic stuff. It's just this kind of, the, these are the games we play. Okay. Um, yeah, Seth does, like, post mania, he needs to actually give himself some time, seriously. As much as it's a, uh, there's like, you know, a kind of culture in wrestling of like toughing it out and all that good stuff. It's it's not good long term. Oh, what single match have you watched the most times? Um, FTR Briscoe's won pretty easily, I think. I think I watched that like five or six times within the first month of being in existence. So, yeah. FTR Briscoe's won is like my one seed. One last beat, my God, one last beat, the DIY extravaganza. Ishii versus Joe, God bless. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get any, any questions that, before our, our illustrious guest. Speaking of such, this is a big moment for British professional wrestling. Uh, last night, there was a little man named Butch who became Pete. And people pretended that was a big deal. That has nothing on <laughs> what's happening here. As I continue to bring wrestle purist dynamics over to the, mm -hmm. the whole Charlie, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. I mean, I'm uh I'm doing this thing around here where I kind of I use the chat as my content because then I don't have to mm -hmm. watch the wrestling. And I was That's like, real. Charlie's giving me such good content. I could literally just bring Charlie <laughs> onto the show. Yeah. You could just talk about the wrestling, and I could just kind of sit here and go, that yeah, sounds man. good. Yeah, all right. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's this, this, uh, this lock in on this topic, Charlie. Let's this, this focus in on it. Mm -hmm. Let me tweet that on here as well. Okay, that's very good. Good idea, good idea. <laughs> Everyone tweet that Charlie's here. Now, we do need to work on the branding part of this. We don't – Charlie of WrestlePurious is, is very limiting, you know? <laughs> we, should, should it just be Charlie of Great Britain? <laughs> Charlie of Great Britain, yeah. Charlie of Britain. <laughs> oh gosh, mm, that's quite I'd the. Avoid that, I'd avoid that one. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't okay. want to tie myself to Brit rest as much as I do talk about it. Yeah, you're not the first person to say that. I can promise you that. So, <laughs> all right. Now, once Charlie's done the tweet, we're going to lock in here, folks. I apologise if I missed questions, but this is a big moment. It's a big occasion. We're going to lock in and craft a forbidden door card. Okay, we have what well, we we like six months early. <clears throat> but let's be honest, you don't need too much. You know, you can kind of do these as dream cards, basically, right? So we can do this. All right. Hmm. Now, chat, you're involved in this too. So we're going to yeah, do this together right. here. Is a, we're going to be a booking. Talk English. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> maybe you should be. Um, Charlie of British Strong Style. Maybe, maybe they're, yes. that's they're really in right I, now. I am popular. one of the people that was uh, very excited about Pete Dunn getting his name back. You I took excited. a very disgusting um, victory lap on the timeline. You, you were I don't even up. watch SmackDown. <laughs> like, that's the thing. I never know the stuff from WWE that's going to pop you because you're like a big Ray mm -hmm. fan, which is always funny yes. to me. Because, I mean, you should be, but it's just, it's funny, right? Like, it's different. So it's. Uh... Have you heard the story of why I'm such a big Ray fan? I mean, other than the fact that he's very Mysterio. I don't think so. No. So, 
I'll tell it real quick because this is the right sort of platform for it. 2006 Royal Rumble. Obviously, we all know he won. We all know why he won, right? Yeah. I was five years old and Rey Mysterio was the guy that I had latched onto. He was my guy. <laughs> and I just have a very distinct memory of going to my mum, Ray's going to win this one. And she was like, I mean... Maybe because, like, obviously, she was like, Yeah, probably because he's just one, but I was five years right. old. So, imagine my absolute shock and delight when Rey Mysterio won the Royal Rumble that I predicted he would win, and that See, stuck with me. That was your first, like, accurate prediction. It yes. set the tone at the time. You didn't have Monty sitting there being like, Well, why? Why is that going to happen? Which mm-hmm. is a different time. I always think things like that are interesting because, like, say Ray doesn't win that match. There's a yeah. real chance that five year old Charlie's just like, oh, wrestling sucks. Yeah, just, there is a real, real chance. That I just don't care anymore. So I, I'm crazy. actually intrigued by this. So that's 2006, right? 2006. Mm-hmm. So how does how did your fandom? Because you were someone who watched TNA, right? When you because yes. in Britain TNA were like they were like the Beatles, folks. For those who don't yes. know, TNA was a big deal here. So what year did you start seeing TNA? I'm intrigued by this timeline. Oh gosh, I'd have to ask my siblings because my older siblings all watched all watched wrestling. They don't as much these days, but um, they were big on it. So I was just sat with my siblings, like we were just watching an episode, and I think it was the episode that the Bucks debuted on, and I was just like, "Huh, these guys are cool." And it was was it the wow. I can't remember if it was the uh, Motor City Machine Guns match was the first one or yes. not? But yeah, yeah, it was that. So that and, would be. And it's like late 09, I think. Yes. So I was like just still eight or like had just turned nine, if like depending on the timeline. But yeah. And then oh that God. stuck with me. And I followed the bugs. I found Ring of Honor and New Japan through them and PWG and all that sort of stuff. And here we are today. Yeah. That was a crazy, like, <clears throat> the, you know, the 20, the TNA stuff, they stuck there for a while, obviously. And they had their mm-hmm. kind of weird, their run. Their unfortunately, real weird run. Yeah, because it coincided with Hogan coming in, so they had a strange run. Um, yeah. But the mid-2010s, I think I saw about it a lot, and it's like, I try not to be an it used to be better guy, especially about things that happened within a decade mm-hmm. ago, but that was a crazy time. There was so much independent wrestling of like a, an elite level in small buildings. Yeah. Everyone that's now on TV is out there, you know, was out there rocking it back then. It's, yep. it's kind of, uh, I'm definitely nostalgic for that. For that era but nonetheless let's uh let's circle back the forbidden door yes. the forbidden door um, indeed i'm gonna star some of these comments because me, we'll, we'll kind of yeah, use these here okay you guys so, have got to bear in mind that this is real bias to my taste in wrestling but yes. i was also just kind of pro- proving a point of they can still do forbidden door without with it not being an issue like so are you are you actually did you have matches already lined up? Do you have things already noted down? Or are you gonna I have, I, I have a list? All right, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm okay. a real professional when it comes to things like this. Okay, this let's, let's uh <clears throat> let's run down your list. We'll go match by match mm-hmm. and we'll figure out we'll see what the chat thinks. I'll tell you what I think. Let's go for it. Go for it. Yeah. So first one is obviously Square vs. Show Rumino. That was the one that I was talked about in chat already. Mm-hmm. I've got El Desperado versus John Moxley. Again, you bear with because this is a very biased list. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I, uh, I get that. Yep. Shingo vs. Hangman. Big one. That's a big uh, one. Okay. Yep. Mm. Then I've got Mercedes versus Stephanie Bakir and versus Willow Nightingale, which is obviously a throwback to the little tournament they did last year. Little tournament. It, it was for a new belt. It wasn't a little mm-hmm. tournament. But it was kind I mean. of. It was little in the amount of people. It, it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Hiromi vs. Darby, obviously. That's a must, yep. <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Zack Sabre Jr. Because I will get this match by hook or by crook. We, we're campaigning for that one, yeah, okay. that works. Um, this one might confuse people, but uh, Eddie Kingston, Ishii and Tanahashi versus David Finley, Gabe Kidd and Alex Coughlin. Because well, there's quite a few stories intertwined there. It's not just bias booking. It's me trying to make sense of where would I put Tanahashi on this is. card. It's slightly biased booking that you've done with a lot with a level head, which I appreciate. Yes. Tanahashi is we do need to find a tag of some kind for mm-hmm. him because he's bless his heart. He's you know, yeah, it's getting tough, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can rock with that. 
Um, this one will pop people because it popped me. Brian Danielson and Kazucha Okada versus Yota Suji and Naito. My God. Okay, that one's a nice all star. I, I like that. That's good. Mm. That's strong. Um, oh, I've just realized I don't have Osprey on this list, which goes to show no. how much you can still actually do even without including some top talents. Osprey. What would be the right match for Osprey in a perfect That's world? That's what I was struggling there? with. Hmm. Because the issue is he's wrestled most of the New Japan roster, so it's like mm-hmm. he's wrestled the whole roster, really, hasn't he? Unless yeah. I'm mistaken. Unless he wrestles the wanted man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! If Nick Nemeth wins the belt from David Finley, which I am genuinely anticipating happening, yeah, me too. He can wrestle the wanted man. I would not say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> they both just do flip bumps the whole time. Yes. What 360 bumps, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe. I also had Ooh. TMDK versus Mogul Embassy on there, but I don't know if that match happened last year, and that's where I've gotten it from. It happened at... Didn't it happen at the Ring of Honor show? I think. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that's where I've gotten it from. That might Because I was just like, this sounds familiar. I don't know why this is like something that's stuck in my brain, but... Yeah. It's, the more we do this, like I'm, I'm kind of thinking through these matches. It's the imbalance is that you can still do a great card. It's just mm-hmm. if you were to do a list of people that have to be on the show, there's a lot more AEW names now because it's yes. like that shift has been like someone pointed out. Um, Tokyo Dome last year, Omega versus Osprey, Jay White versus Okada. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, one of those guys was an AEW mm-hmm. guy then, and we're we're yeah. dangerously close to all four of those guys. <laughs> Oh, it's, guys. it's wild. I don't know where you stand on uh, the Okada thing. Like, where? Because I know you were on the air with me when we, when the news broke. But where have yeah. you kind of? Where's your take at now? A couple of days later. Now that my just initial reaction isn't just to laugh because of how insane it is. Because of when that broke, I was just laughing for about ten minutes. I had nothing uh, to add to that conversation. But I would much prefer him to stay in New Japan. But I'm biased, so if he's going to go anywhere, I want him in AEW. So yeah. it's quite, it's it really is a it's a sad situation, I think, because of like him feeling the need to leave New Japan. When I still think there's so much he can do there, like especially like building up the younger talent. But if he if that's not something that he's interested in doing, then I hope he gets paid on the way out. I guess. Yeah, he, I think he's going to get paid. It sounds yeah. like it's going to be. Yeah. It's it kind of sounds like Tony's time. already paid him, to be honest. Yeah, it does. It's a wild time. Um, we were talking yesterday, like on on the Respiratory show, and everyone was mentioning mm. like how much WWE want him, and I don't personally believe they want him enough to do a unique deal for them where he's like a part timer. No. I don't think his value to them, while strong, is not enough for them to give him like a Brock deal. To me, anyway. Yeah. What if they do? Then he's. I mean, then he really has mm. got. He can pick what he wants. Yeah. Because that right now is AEW's big advantage. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I like that Forbidden Door card, though. I want to see some of the names here, but in the chat, was thrown out. Um, what did we God. have here? Eddie and Shingo, of course, in a ring match there, G1. Uh, oh, yes. I would never say no to that. See, my issue think? is I want Shingo to wrestle everyone. So, Well, yeah, we need to kind of you know duplicate him in some way. Yes. Um, <laughs> who do you think is the next Triple Crown champ? This is this intrigues mm. me. Chat, you can play along with this too. I mean, this is a tough one, I think, to figure out. Just like, who um, is it going to be? A New Japan talent? Is it going to like? I think just, we've probably got a couple more AEW matches to get through before we get to another New Japan talent. Because I'm, I'm kind of sold on the idea that, that if they tell this story with Gabe Kidd, right, he's going to be the one that wins it from him. So that's fuck the knows thing, what's gonna yeah. happen there. If, if it's going to be an extended feud, he kind of has to get in the end, right? Mm-hmm. But you know this as much as, like, Gabe Kidd's status is up in the air too, right? Like, what's Gabe mm-hmm. Kidd going to be doing at that time? I mean, I hope that he is within this kind of, uh, this circle and long enough to have a few with Eddie Kingston. Yes. But what's the, what was the news about Gabe's contract? There was news recently. Uh, I mean, I... The news was, like, Gabe's, uh, Dan Maloney's, Alex Coughlin's and Clark Connors, all their contracts are up. They're all up this month. Um, I don't know anything about any of their contracts, whether they're re-signing or not. But right. based on knowing when David Finley's is up, I don't think they're leaving because David Finley right. is 
uh, I don't know if this is a scoop or not, but David Finley's locked until the end of the year. So, okay. I personally don't think they're going anywhere just yet. Gabe Kidd is the the standout talent of that yes. of the uh, the War Dog squad, right? He's the he's the the one seed, so to speak. But he's recently we were talking about like, oh, what would he do as a free agent? But he he really should. In an ideal world, he'll stay in New Japan for a while yet. You know, like yeah. he's he's so new and raw as a real player on a roster. So he'd be yeah. an interesting triple crown. Um, I do wonder if they would want a bigger star, though. You know, I, I, I'm not mm. sure. I almost yeah. wonder if Gabe costs Eddie that triple crown at some point. I almost wonder. Potentially. And maybe that Eddie be, wins that'd again. Be quite interesting. You know? Yeah, yeah that'd that'd be just, quite interesting. The thing with the triple crown is it's like it's what do you want to achieve with it, right? It's like it would do a lot yeah. for Gabe, who we both think a lot of, but from a bigger picture, I assume they want this thing to be main eventing big shows at some point, right? I hope you would, you would think. <laughs> you would think. Like... <laughs> yeah, I it's a really interesting situation. Um yeah. when is the next US New Japan show? Windy City Riot. So That's this is April. the other thing. Is... Unless they do one Mania weekend, which is the week before, so they're not. So ignore me. <laughs> See, this is the other thing, right? Is there's a, There's been a shift here of like two years ago, maybe even mm-hmm. less, New Japan was running TV tapings for Strong. Yes. Then they said, no more TV turns. We're just going to do monthly shows, basically. Yeah. Now we're looking at a schedule where it's like, they're going to do like one of these cool rip and they're going to try and make bigger mm-hmm. cards. So... In fear of being dismissive of what I'm sure means a lot to Eddie Kingston, and it pops me he has all the belts. I don't necessarily know what the, the role this thing is going to play. You know, I never yeah. do. Like, is Eddie going to? Because right now on AEW TV, they're just like, you know, it's like he's like another mid card champ with three yeah. of them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, what is... <laughs> it's so bizarre because like he's got an AEW belt, he's got a Ring of Honor belt, and he's got a New Japan Strong belt, yeah. and like he hasn't done anything. Ring of Honor related with it yet? I'm assuming it's going to main event Supercard of Honor, like it should, unless they're having Athena main event, which I would never say no to. But okay, this is a good point. Yeah, Ring of when has he last been on Ring of Honor? Has he has he been on on a taping since Death Before Dishonor or Final Battle? Even that was the latest one. Okay, Ring of Honor. Yeah, Yeah, he did the match of Andy Henry. Yeah. Yes. There was like a last minute thing. Okay, his last TV match for Ring of Honor was against Evil Uno in Quebec. And uh, that was December 6th. So this is, uh, it's just, and again, you know, it's just weird more than anything else. Yeah. At least I haven't cut a promo about it. Like, open invitation, come to AEW, come to Ring of Honor, I'll come to New Japan, like, do something with this. Like, it's fascinating because, like, the, to me, the big thing to circle is when we get to AEW pay per views, what does he do? Right. Because yeah. obviously, so the Revolution, which you're going to be attending, which I am very jealous, that's going to be, that show is mm-hmm. going to be incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think be- you're in for something special there. Yeah. Um, this is my you. call out 2021. <laughs> yeah, for you, this is especially incredible because you, mm-hmm. you've, like, not only have you got this incredible, uh, what appears to be a great show with an incredible crowd, and you've got Sting, he's wrestling the Young Bucks too, so it's like, you couldn't yeah. have gone better here. But anyway, um, the main event of that show is either going to be Sting, probably Sting, yeah. and if not, it's going to be Swerve, right? Swerve winning the belt. Yeah. So it's like, what is? <laughs> how are we going to get this triple crown thing to be a thing? <laughs> it's it's not know. even, I don't know, it's hard. He needs Difficult. someone like... Big time to wrestle on that show. What's Shingo doing? <laughs> <laughs> My answers are always Shingo. <laughs> yeah, it's a good answer to have. Oh, I mean, it's, it works usually. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have the chats good tonight. He's doing the tag right with uh, with Ortiz. Yes, it's gonna be good. Which is which is gonna be tremendous. It is very funny that Mike Santana um, mm-hmm. won that feud and has never been on again. This which... has disappeared. I don't know. How, I mean, I like Santana. I like Ortiz. So do I. But if only one of those guys was going to still be on TV after, how did he lose? 
yeah it's, yeah it's very very odd like ortiz has that eddie connection so he kind of lucks out on a well if eddie needs a tag partner ortiz is here like yeah he's a good i do feel for santana in that respect i feel for it's a difficult thing because from what we understand, and this has been kind of said, but it's like the belief is one of the two being Santana, he felt they what they deserved better. And Ortiz yes. was like, I think this is pretty good. We get paid rather well to be professional wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's fair when fans like pick between those, you know, because it's like everyone has different everyone has different motivations, different aspirations, so on and so forth. Yeah. And I don't know what you think. I'm not like, I don't think Santana has a particularly high ceiling as a singles in AEW. No. But if he believes it, he kind of has to try, right? Like it's, you have to yeah. roll the dice on these things. It's, I find it a difficult kind of, uh, it's a difficult situation. I think the, the promotions found it difficult because I think they want them together. Yeah. But yeah, they do. From from, yeah. from what I've heard, they're just like, well, you can always reunite with Ortiz. And he's like, no, yeah. you can book me as a singles guy. And they're just stalemating over and over again. It's interesting. He's not even being used, used on Ring of Honor, is he? Which I think no, says he's... a lot. <clears throat> I don't think he's made a... Let me have a look. I, th I don't think he's actually been at a show since <laughs> since the Ortiz thing. Um, oh, I'll double check this here. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. Um, did you get to see Rampage last night, Charlie? I have not yet. It is on my list. I've heard good things. Though. I've heard that Darby Allen and Jeff Hardy had a crazy match. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. I good. saw. I saw like the uh, Darby bump on the ramp where he went fucking straight over and rolled through it. I was like, bro, he doesn't. Is he made of fucking rubber or something? Like he's just. <laughs> it was wild, especially for Rampage. Like, yeah, they. There was another one where he took like over the announce table, oh, and it looked like hell. Like he, his back yeah. hit the chair. It was brutal. Um, How's he the Hardys to are mountain? they're leaning heel. The Hardys, mm. which is interesting. Um, well, I don't know if it's interesting, but it's happening. Uh, <laughs> interesting is a choice of word. But... Yeah, Jeff's. I mean, he's not a natural heel, but Darby's such a good baby face that it kind of yeah. worked. The match was really good. So. Yeah, Rampage. Also worth watching is uh, Statlander and Queen of Manar. That match yes, is quite good. I've too. heard. Yeah, it was. It was Queen a good Manata, show. Man. Yeah, she is. She's, she's doing a lot for herself. She is. She's transitioned to TV very, very well. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, it takes you know, like it takes a little bit and this kind of growing pains. But she's been on TV now, like every week for the last month. It feels like. Yeah. And she's made it count. So it. She's someone who need you need to give a push, really, right? You need to give yeah. her an actual direction, I think, now. I honestly kind of hope she's Fonda Rosa's match tonight. I don't know whether they do that on back-to-back yeah. -back nights, but I want to see what those guys can do together. Yeah, and Rosa needs a... She needs, like, an actual hook here, too, right? She needs a feud yes. or whatever it may be. So, yeah, I think we talk about a lot on Thursdays. The women's division, it's like they're close to having something here. Mm-hmm. But that loss, that next step is a big one, and they have to actually take it. Mercedes yeah. should help if indeed Mercedes comes in. But uh, it feels – I'm always hesitant to do this because we've done it so many times, but it feels healthier now than it has been before, to me anyway. Yes, I don't know what you it think. Does, like, it right? does, yeah. Yeah. There's – like AO mentioned it on Thursday, we're not having endless discourse about the women every time there's a match now. Like, all of January, it's been pretty chill. Like, there's not been, like <laughs> – it's not been terrified to talk about a women's segment, which is a win for AEW because sometimes it's real scary to get on here and yeah. be like, well, I have to give an opinion on this now and I don't really want to. But um, no, I am happy for the women because of it seems like they're really trying to step in the right direction. And ev I don't know whether you've noticed it as well, but everyone seems a lot more motivated as well. Mm -hmm. Like they're going out there and like, Maybe it's just because they're putting different women on TV and they're mixing things up a little bit, but there seems to be a lot more like pep in the step of some of the girls. So I'm happy for I, them. Whatever's changed, I'm happy for them. I agree. That's the thing that's happening, and I think it's. I think Mercedes is part of that. You know, I, mm -hmm. I think there's a. You know, it's like they're gonna if they hear the same things we do. They're, yeah. all, they're all the whole roster so online. They all hear the buzz. It's like that'd be a big game changer. So I think that's part of it. 
The only thing that I think is an issue at the moment is the champs. I like them both individually. I like them both as talents, but when you have them two as the ch- as, like as both titles, yes, very shtick heavy, very kind of goofy, yeah. right? Like it's. I wish there was more of a contrast in terms of tone. Me they're kind of. I mean, it is a contrast, but they're both very gimmicky. I guess is the best way to put yeah. it, right? It's, so yeah, that that, that would. I don't know how Mercedes fits into that necessarily, but listen, man, I would just have Mercedes win the bell on the dynamite after revolution, but that's just me. Like I hate yeah. that how much that women's belt has been hot potatoed, but if we're making a statement, make it. Like just do it. Like Yeah. I just don't know how like how does Mercedes interact with Times Tony? Like what does that look like? <laughs> I just I genuinely I really don't know. Because <laughs> At the moment, Tony's still like being portrayed as a heel, but I think Mercedes at the top of her game is a heel. Like yeah. she, I always loved her heel work more than her baby face work. Not that she can't be a good baby face, but she's yeah. yeah I agree. It's like I don't know, man. I f- I feel like they've got to do something if this is what they're gonna do. They need to get Tony as a baby face on screen so Mercedes can just peek the piss out of her. Like I think this is the route we've got to go. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I think. The idea of Tony trying to be a heel in a promo thing with Mercedes, I think, could backfire. I would avoid that, honestly. Yes, um, quite heavily. Yeah, that, that's to me. That's the thing. You have to prepare the division. If indeed Mercedes is coming, you have to prepare the division first. So, hopefully, they're thinking about the things we are. Because <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> isn't always the case, but hopefully. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but the uh, the Osprey match on on TNA was quite. It was. That dude That's is insane. another one on my list. That table bump is this one of the scariest bumps I've seen this year because I genuinely thought something had gotten stuck in his back. I thought it, it was did. game over. <laughs> it did. It did. They were the doctor. Like, I know it over. scraped him. Did they so, have to? I, pause? Yeah. Oh. I don't know if it was they were, but there was the doctor was doing something to like the yeah. like his lower back, and when he came, when he stood up, there was like some was kind of blood or scarring scrape, on the bottom. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was gnarly. He kind of just sat yeah. on the table leg. It was. Yeah. It was pretty. Yeah. It was pretty. pretty I think good. if he was like any further back, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to like <laughs> spit the situations that could have been. But fuck, I'm glad he's okay. Let's go with that. I am glad he's yeah. okay. The match is is a lot better than their uh, their other match. It's like mm-hmm. it's very. It, it's very. Oh, no, I need to watch him. Yeah, it's very. Uh, I mean, you know, Osprey matches like it's very go go go. Alexander's the same way, but mm-hmm. oh my god, they work. The crowd is just electric for this match. I mean, yeah. it really is a fun TV, especially for a TV main event. It's really exciting. So, nice. oh my god, Manny's in the chat now. Manny's in the just, chat. Wow, so bringing everyone. Like a, out. Yeah, considering like a- we we circled back to Osprey, what do you have him do at Forbidden Door? It's really well, a difficult situation. This, this opens a whole can of worms, Carly, because mm-hmm. he, because we could just look at Forbidden Door, or we could look in general at what we would have Will Ospreay do. Yes, and then I know what I would some, not have him do. <laughs> yeah, then you go into some dangerous directions, right? It's like, what mm. do you? I mean, I think he should be a babyface, and I would. Use, this is me personally. I would use him as the face of the kind of. We're going to get back into the ring. That's our mentality mm-hmm. this year for AEW. It's going to be about the action. We're going to have the best in-ring wrestling in the whole world. This is where the wrestling is. And I would use mm-hmm. him as the face of that. I would try to avoid saying restore the feeling, but that's kind of what I'm saying. You know, like that's the yeah. point. What I would not do, however, is insert him into the coldest feud in the promotion and put him with Don Callis. <laughs> uh, what about you, Charlie? I would... A hundred percent avoid getting him involved in this if we could. But uh, uh I have a really big um feeling that Osprey's the kind of person like, well, Jericho gave me that match at Wembley. I'll do him the favor and help him finish this feud and we're gonna get stuck there for four months and I'm very, very scared about it. <laughs> it's gonna be that could be an issue on those on those Thursday mm. review shows. Oh, it could get real spiteful. And we're all Osprey yeah. fans, but it could get very spiteful. Yeah, if, if he's just one of five dudes standing behind Don Callis, like, I don't yeah. know. That would be such a they waste. Need to, um, yeah. if he, 
genuinely, you could bring him in and turn on Don Callis immediately, and I would be happy. Just be like, that's, yeah, that would be the would biggest do. baby face turn you could do with him because the crowd's going to love him. Like, of course. <laughs> it's like, I, oh man. <clears throat> It's, it'll be funny too because so many of their debuts, people are babyface when they shouldn't be. So to do the opposite yes. of Osprey would be to like, do the opposite would be kind of very funny. Yeah, I, but as far as Forbidden Door, it's like I uh, unless someone like really emerges as yeah. a star in this next six months for New Japan, I don't know because he wrestled all the top guys so often. Yeah. Um. I mean, we were talking no about earlier, could, but. Uh, Maybe, maybe a, you reignite the uh, the Gabe Kid thing. Maybe, yeah, man. I mean, th- their match at um, Uprising. I was there for it. I know yeah. I'm I'm a high. I'm I rated this quite highly because I was there for it. Like it was different in person, but they've sure. got a better one in them. They are hundred yeah. percent, and in front of the sort of crowd that Forbidden Door draws. And if you want to make Gabe Kid something this year to like a bigger audience, this is how you do it, man. Yeah, I've yeah. been wrestling Osprey at Forbidden Door. Yeah, I just try to think this afresh. Like you mentioned that match, and like yeah. that match was good. It just my thing with that match was I wish they had just worked with the you know that intensity of the opening five yeah. minutes where they was going nuts. They I think they if they'd have just gone further down that path, they would have they weren't saying special. Instead, their match became more like you know the kind of Osprey formula. Really good. Yeah. But I think they could have done something a little bit, bit more different. But um, with how volatile the build was, I was expecting it to be a lot yeah. more chaotic than it was in like the uh, the second portion. Yeah, I, that, that's my thing. It's like, and I think the crowd, I mean, you could speak to it better. Watching it on tape, it felt like the crowd was surprised that beyond just you, it felt like everyone yes. was kind of you see, the, the energy changed a little bit in the second half. It felt like to me. Yeah. So yeah. it happens. It picked up when they were like slapping the shit out of each other yeah. but like when there was like a clear oh this guy's got the upper hand right now we were just like well well they're, now they're just wrestling they're not then that like i'm meant to believe they fucking hate each other like what, what? Right. yeah and the wrestling was good yes. but it wasn't necessarily yeah, the, what, I, this isn't yeah. a criticism really because of it's, just it's like, oh we got no. to see a great wrestling yeah. match but it's more of a it's like a it's more of an idea thing than execution thing, yeah. right? It's like yes. there was a chance to do something different. But, um, but yeah, Gabe Kidd, there's something for Forbidden Door. The Wanted Man, perhaps, for Forbidden Door. <laughs> um, I don't know who else New Japan are bringing in. Do we think there's any, are there any guys out there that they may bring in? I'm not sure. Like, I will say, I Nakajima I probably gets himself a good mm. offer out of all this. Because mm. they need some help now, right? Like, yeah, he's still freelance. Feels like he's off a mag gone up a little bit to me. Um, yeah, that's very very true. Shelton again, Shelton Benjamin. Hmm. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Shelton gets the oh, call. <laughs> Ollie, I still think Ollie's going to be an AW personally, but I could be wrong. I I don't, know. I, I don't know. I can't see Ollie signing anywhere for the next seven months. Because of, of the, the dates, bank yeah. he is making on these indie dates right now. Oh my god. Like I would not give that up for a, like even if the contract was like close to like was six figures close to seven, I would not give that up straight away. Like He's... getting the freedom to travel the world and wrestle whoever the fuck I want after like being sh- so sheltered in WWE. Like yeah, yeah man, I'm to, running yeah. with that. It's also one of those things where you only can, like, it's, it's the kind of run you can only do once, too, right? Because, like, once you've done that, the yeah. world tour, obviously, he's a name, but he's not a big enough name to just do it forever. So there is something yeah. you said for just doing it, branding, rebranding yourself, building a different image, and then going to whatever promotion you want to go to. Um, he's racing his stocks right now. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Shelton Benjamin, there was a lot of AEW buzz about. I don't know if that's a real thing now, but... Uh, that was where a lot of the initial buzz was, right? Like mm-hmm. AEW going to reach out to Shelton. So we'll see. Um, we shall see. Their roster is very big, obviously, as we know. But yeah, I mean, Shelton's yeah, the kind of guy. I don't think he'd be taking anyone's spot necessarily. You know, yeah. he's kind of just a guy on the roster, right? There's. I was speaking to Eva about this yesterday briefly. I think how big AEW's roster is, and the fact that Tony Khan signed so many of the 
pandemic era releases from WWE, which is not a bad thing. It was good, a good thing that so many people landed jobs. I will preface that. For I'm sure. not like For criticizing sure. that. Um, but I think that's genuinely why the perception of Okada going to uh, the AEW is like making people so upset. Like, I don't think there'd be as much drama about it if like he hadn't yeah. signed so many people and he was letting people out of contracts when they asked allegedly again i don't know but this is what the sort of things you hear so yeah, yeah that is my take on that to be it's, honest. it's a very unique time because yeah. <clears throat> the number one company is led by regime that if they had their way previously and had you know was calling the shots a lot of the talent that's now in AEW or has been in AEW, would have never been, they would have never left WWE, a lot of those guys, right? Yeah. Like, I think in fear of being mean, if you compare the last cut list to the lists of yesteryear when Vince was in charge, they were very, mm -hmm. very different profiles of talent. Like, Ali's a big one, Dolph is a big one, but other than that, yeah. respectfully, there's a lot of people that aren't exactly, <laughs> you aren't desperate to see them as all elite, right? Really, I mean, yeah. a lot of the guys that got cut. Whereas when Vince was making those calls, he was cutting like, real players real guys that yes. were like you know of no so all of these things have kind of added up to create a really strange wrestling landscape yep. and your reaction on thursday honestly like uh, i kind of co-sign of just it kind of just popped you how wild it was right mm -hmm. it was like because it is is this is going to be fun but like seeing what he does yeah i think where i know if was very passionate about it it's like it's more the trend, right? It's like the, it's the vibe that every wrestler who makes a name for themselves, it's just going to come down to this two-person bidding war. Yeah. <laughs> At what point does it stop? I don't know. I think, but the thing we all agree on is guys are getting paid. God bless, right? I mean, it is, yeah. it is what it is, but it's definitely a different time. Wrestling is, I mean, Okada is looking at a situation here where he can make three, four million dollars. Just saying, mm -hmm. the numbers I'm just throwing out, folks, loosely here, to wrestle 20 matches a year. And he may not even have to leave Japan full time. Yep. He may just have flown in. That is insane. And better yet, the audiences he's going to go wrestle in front of know all of his staff and are going to treat him like a god yes. when he walks in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, that's different. <laughs> is he like, Okada is getting a hell of a lot of benefits out of all of this. Like, <laughs> He's like, oh, like, this is, I have never known a situation in wrestling where two people like Okada and Mercedes are free agents at the same time, and there's, like, real bidding wars for them. Like, they are probably, this yeah. is, like, probably the only time we'll ever see two of the biggest free agents in the world free at the same time. And there's a yeah. strong chance the same company lands both of them, which is yeah. wild. It is. It is wild. And I, I would love to know the kind of, I would love to know the internal thinking when it starts to go the other way. You know, like, mm -hmm. I wonder if a, if a Triple H, when he, when he sits himself down in the evening, you know, and he puts on NWA Crockett Cup or whatever, yes. and he's sitting there thinking about it, I wonder if a part of him is like, if you're willing to pay him that much, good luck. You know, I wonder if that's mm -hmm. the mentality or it is, we need to figure out a way to pay this fucker some more money. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder which of those it is. The yeah. Mercedes one was really unique in that she, it like the talks with one side fell apart. Yeah. So then she rebuilt talks with the other side and started over again there. And it was like that one has gone up and down like a roller coaster. Oh. My goodness. I still have no faith that she's going to land anywhere in like the next six months. Like, until I won't, I will not believe it until I see it, which I think is the only correct take to have when it comes to Mercedes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the folks that are like in the know, quote unquote, are very confident. Mm -hmm. But people have been confident about things before, you know. Like it's especially yeah. with we we, we were all know. really confident that Jay White was going to land in WWE, and then he turned up on yeah. a random dynamite. So yeah, I mean, the other one too with WWE now is the Punk thing was a game changer for, for the way people yes. think about these things. Absolutely, because. Every person with any kind of connection, other than like one or two exceptions, would tell you that was not going to happen. And then it happened. Yep. <laughs> and so and now, 
Everyone, like two like, minutes oh. before it happened, yeah. Sean Ross upset that tweet, and I was just like, "There is no fucking way <laughs> that this is happening right now." That was a wild night. That was yeah. Oh, and man. the effect of that is so like obviously fans online they now think anything's possible in a way they haven't yes. for a long time. But the the hilarious part is so do the wrestlers now. Yeah. Because a lot of the wrestlers they follow these stories the way you and I do, the way folks in the chat do. So they saw this CM Punk thing, but and now there's wrestlers that are like, Mercedes will be in the Rumble. So, you know, mm -hmm. like, they're just being worked. It's like, yep. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. So, yeah, I guess it's going to be, uh, it's going to be eventful whenever, whenever and wherever she lands. It's going to be a, yeah, it's going to be a big, big story. Okay, chat. I've been on for an hour now. If you have any questions for myself and Charlie, throw them our way as we kind of wind down here. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like to talk about, Charlie? Is there anything that's, that's on your mind that you'd like to get off your chest? Anything you'd like to talk oh, about? Oh, I, I do have a topic that I've been building okay. a rant about. I have talked about this to anyone that will listen. Okay. These fucking companies need to stop <laughs> let, make, letting wrestlers make decisions about wrestling injured. Because we see oh, okay. it time and time and fucking again how it destroys their bodies and their bodies just give out on them and they get a partial meniscus tear and they're, yeah, they're still allowed to main event fucking mainly are. <laughs> I'm, I don't you, even... I'm not really this... <laughs> passionate about this. I discovered this last night. I'm not even really a Seth fan. But the fact that, like, if it was anyone else, Triple H would not let him wrestle at Mania. I don't think. But because of Triple H has such a soft spot for Seth, he's going to turn a blind eye on this. And it's going to make anyone think that they can push through injuries like that, even though Seth's been injured for about a year now. Like, yeah. it, I went off on one in a group chat with Ibu, and he was just like, you should talk about this on a pod. I was just like, well, good luck to whoever's on screen with me. I'm torn on it because it's like, you're right. Like, objectively, you are correct. Mm -hmm. And it is like an incredibly dangerous culture to encourage. And yes. The way that, like, for example, the Cody thing was, like, glorified. Yes. Even though it wasn't his intention, the way it's been glorified has now made it, like, even more toxic than it was before. Yep. But there is a part of me that's, like, oh, I think you got to let him resort to WrestleMania. <laughs> you know? I like, get it. With, it is such a unique situation for Seth, I think, because <laughs> of, like, he's so close. In like yeah. it's the punk match and it's the mania main event that you always wanted. It's like I get it, but also like, bro, these companies need to grow a backbone and start looking after their talent. Well, you're not gonna have talent to look after. They're all gonna be fucking injured. Yeah, we just sort of max uh, right. Like yes, and max that needs oh, to go I have feelings surgery. about that as well. Yeah, he needs to go get surgery too. Yeah, like we had that two day stretch there. You had Max who. You know, right or wrong, whether he should have done the match or not, he put in an admirable performance right against mm -hmm. uh, against Joe. Two days later, poor Kota Ibushi drags himself in there. Yep. And that one was like, he should not. I mean, to say he shouldn't have done that is an understatement, right? Mm -hmm. I know he got uh, he got hurt like in the match too, right? He hurt, yeah, he hurt going in and in, yeah. And he's what was his injury beforehand? Like his shoulder? Or uh, shoulder, yeah. That never really fully recovers. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's it is. It does feel like wrestling is very kind of it's almost archaic with these things, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we all know what I think of the FTR, but I mean, Dax Harwood, oh. God bless him, he's hanging on with dear life. <laughs> yeah, man. Like we we joke around and we say like, yeah, that's real. That's real. Grabs like love of the games, that sort of thing. But when it comes down to it, like the more you find out how many of these wrestlers are actually like working her on a regular basis when medical care is at its peak like in like this day and age and they're they've got 200 plus wrestlers on their rosters that you can cycle in and out of tv like a guy can disappear for three months and it's fine like it's like i don't know it really really winds me up that i think and I don't necessarily blame the fans for this, but people applauding the fact that Seth's going to get back in time for Mania. It really grated on a nerve last night. Because I was just like, bro, but we know about his back problems as well. He's not going to be able to pick his kid up in a month or in like in a year if like he keeps going the way he's going. It's crazy. Yeah, you're not wrong at all. It's like, and, but the thing is, I'm the same dipshit that I will completely agree with you. And then I'll watch World's End and be like, good for Max, he toughed it out. <laughs> 
I'm, I, I'm I am also like, like yes, true. I'm a know, hypocrite but, in that sense as well, but yes, no, um, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. I mean, it's, you can't even argue it. Um, you're an Arsenal fan, right, Charlie? I sure am an Arsenal fan. We yes, won five 0 earlier. Makes a change. Really? Oh my God. I'm yeah, sad. I think it was Crystal Palace. It was. <laughs> God bless. Yeah, that um, there was one week recently. I don't follow football closely. Mm-hmm. Someone said something on the show, and Monty was like, "I want to talk about this after the show." And there was like a ten-minute football conversation. Do you remember yes. this? I do remember this. There was yeah. a comment made about. I think it was like an ex Chelsea player or something. And yes. after the show, Monty just chatted. He just chatted about it for like 15 minutes. I was like, <laughs> do we have business to attend to or are we just talking about so, it? Was, so we're like 10 minutes in this conversation and Monty goes, he realises that Charlie is not, she's not spoken in this entire conversation. He's just, <laughs> Charlie's just sitting there listening to this discussion and Monty goes, so... You know, Charlie, I'm sure you've got players for Arsenal that are like, you know, they fit this description. Charlie goes, no, not really. <laughs> I was just like, no, I just watch, I just watch the games every now and then. <laughs> yeah. It was this like extensive football detour that was taken. <laughs> um, to answer this, Michael asked about the hiring freeze with Jay White. The belief is the hiring freeze was the the game yeah. change with Jay White, right? That was the, the, the take is that, he was like someone I desperately wanted. That was where things were trending. And then uh, hire and freeze, put a halt to any made his choice and away he went. So, yeah, uh, that's the take as far as I know. I don't know if you've got anything really? else on that, Charlie, but I think that's the take, right? No, yeah, that's all about all I know about it is uh, uh, there was, I actually know from someone that was there that Jay White was at WrestleMania. So take that as you will. God. Uh, mm. The player was Eden Hazard, I'm pretty sure. I think, I think. so. Um, thoughts on what to do with the World Heavyweight Championship. Saw the faults. This is the, the issue. This is the issue, okay? So we were talking yesterday about this. You could make the rumble for Seth's belt. Yes. The issue, as this comment points out, is <laughs> then Cody is in a match that he doesn't want to be in because he wants to yep. finish the story for the other belt. <laughs> So, yeah. How the fuck? I don't know how you navigate that. I don't know who. If Seth couldn't make the show, <sighs> I would probably, uh, I'd probably heat up KO and do him and Punk. Probably. Yeah. I think I think right. that's yeah. probably the best option for it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that would be. I don't know if how Kevin would feel about that, but. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Business is sure. business. Look at this, Charlie. Look. Maybe, maybe time oh, I did. I have man. seen the tweet. I have been sent it by three different people. I love that this is my brand. It's just like the British people are on TV at WWE. Someone tell Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our defined brands, you know. Like mm-hmm. my my mentions fill up when they do like a Dustin Rhodes match, which is like yes. slightly embarrassing, but also very funny. <laughs> um, do you think there's going to be another run with Kenny at the top? Nah, we just want Kenny back. Mm. You know, that's the key. Now, I right? just want Kenny to recover properly yeah. and have a good quality of life because diverticulitis is no fucking joke if he's got to have surgery for that in a couple of months it might be game over like i'm yeah. like people are talking about oh kenny versus okada at all in i don't know that kenny will be back before november to be honest like obviously i don't know how bad it is for him but based off of what uh the reports were saying yesterday the fact that they're waiting seven weeks to reassess the swelling. Nah. <clears throat> and it's also... I think it's just... Yeah. Yeah. We spoke about it a lot, and it's like, people don't realise how beat up that dude is still, you know? I think some mm-hmm. folks think that when he came back uh, after his you know, year or so, or whatever it was, he was away, I think some people yeah. seem to believe it erased all of his prior injuries. He's super beat up. Man. It's like... Yep. There was stories last year about he would have a singles match and it would be like he'd have to reset after that physically. It was a lot on his body. So I don't know. Yeah. I um obviously I agree with Charlie about we just want him to be healthy and and such. But uh in terms of wrestling, I wouldn't expect him to have a run like he had before he, you know, went away. I mean, that was yeah, that took a lot out of him, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, that was another case of what you were talking about, right? Mm-hmm. He was a guy that's working that's another yeah. thing that have made these wrestlers think well 
Kenny Omega gets praised for it all the time. Why can't I do it? It's just like, no, it's Kenny hid a lot of that. Like people could tell he was banged up, but until he went out and it was like reported what he was actually going through, people didn't really know. Like, beh- yeah. like if you weren't behind the scenes or had connections, you did not know how injured Kenny was. He kept that very under wraps. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, that's a perfect example of it. Like the, the public response to that, and again, I was part of it was like, God, that dude, he toughed out to, to make sure that mm-hmm. bell went to hangman. But you look back and you look at, especially I've watched some of that stuff back recently. I watched yeah. the Christian match back. And honestly, maybe it's because I'm just seeing it now because I'm looking for it, but he just looks yeah. in pain. I mean, he's having yeah. great matches, obviously, because of course he is. But he looks in agony, the poor dude. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, this is an interesting one. I know you guys don't want to look at uh, wrestlers of commodities, but Okada and Osprey are the Omega Danielson replacements, right? I mean, probably, yeah. right? And you yeah, look at man, that way. they're both winding down. It makes it. <clears throat> See, this is why when people talk about like AW having a bloated roster, they're right. But also, some of these guys, they've got in the prominent positions right now. They yeah. ain't going to be in the prominent positions in 18 months or less. Like, Yeah, 100%. Look, the champs, I mean, I don't know how long Joe's got, but I mean, not mm. long. You know, it's uh, Dragon obviously has told us he's winding down. The only thing I would say to that comment is Okada is, he's wrestling years are older than his actual age, you know? Yes. Like, he's uh, yes. he's definitely got a lot of miles in the clock too. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's... Uh, it's going to be an interesting time as these generate as the generation that we kind of see a lot of fades into the background. Mm-hmm. Who are the young guys? Do you think? You know, who are the guys that are, are up next? I don't know. I think they've really got to invest in Daniel Garcia this year. They've got to get him back on track and like just like in a position where uh, he can be someone that like a believable top guy like in a few like not not right now obviously but like right. in like 18 months two years like he can be that guy because he is still very young himself he's like he's just turned 25 so like yeah. i want to see him with the tnt or the international belt this year like i want to see him get that chance to do the title run um and to do it and god bless love ring of honor but to do it with a belt that people put more weight on of course. like yeah like yeah. Because if it's not the Ring of Honor World Championship, people don't really care. And people only really yeah. care about that because of who the last three champions have been. So, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Daniel Garcia is the big one for me. Um, Top Flight in Private Party. Oh, Hook's yeah. another good one. Hook's uh, one that we're going to be monitoring closely. After yes. that match with Joe, and I'm not even like a huge fan of him, but they need to have an idea for Hook after yes. that. You, you can't just... <laughs> You can't just put him back where he was after that, right? You have to I you have to have a follow-up. So yeah, that's one. Putting uh, Starks in the same category as uh Danny and Hook's quite funny to me because Starks is like in his 30s, which is like there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. He's still like he's also relatively new, new is, to yeah. like yeah. Yeah, he's relatively new still physic- to like a national audience. Like Oh, for sure, yeah. But physically he's also, you know, he's, he, yeah, he's that he's neck thing is cooked. pretty scary. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think the situation was scary. I know there's some things people talked about with WWE, like that could be an issue for Ricky and WWE. I hope not. I'm a, I'm a fan. Like I'm on WrestleMania, the biggest fan of Ricky. Um, mm-hmm. I still think there's something like he's one of those talents that I I totally concede the the kind of doubters and the concern. But I think when yeah. he's under like the spotlight, I do think there are signs there's something special there. I, I'm convinced yeah. of it, you know. Like that Danielson thing, I don't know if one always jokes. Dan, he was Danielson, of course. He had a good match with Danielson, but Ricky was great mm-hmm. in that in that little yeah. feud they had, you know. Was... So I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever see it. Some guys don't have the, you know, it doesn't work out that way. But uh, mm-hmm. it's gonna have to be pretty soon if it's gonna happen for Ricky, right? As we just mentioned. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think if like they had Hobbs save him during that Battle of the Belts match. If they get Hobbs away from Don Callis and team him back up with Ricky to reform team, team Taz and we get another run of that, I will be happy because that is both guys in a better position for me yeah. personally. Hobbs needs that especially, I think. Hobbs yes. is uh, what a fascinating run he's had. He feels he's... like he's always in the exact same spot. 
it's bizarre. It's so bizarre. I saw that man win the Revolution mm. ladder match on the Dynamite to win the ring for the chance at the TNT belt or whatever. It was. What, however that stuff works these days. And now he's like the second, third guy in a stable run by Don Callis and had one run with, or like one or two runs with the belt. I think it was only one and lost it ridiculously quick to someone who should not have been holding the belt because of they keep throwing Wardlow at oh, that yeah. fucking belt. Yeah. And it's so... Luckily, we've moved away from that, but that was a real issue last year. Um, but yeah, no, Brutal. Hobbs, man. I, I, I think there's a fairly high ceiling for Hobbs if they book him correctly. And they don't I seem do to know too. what they want to do with him. So Yeah, he just he feels like the kind of talent that Tony really struggles with. Like, yeah. The match with Punk was like two, like well over two years ago now. Yep. <laughs> like coming out of that, the whole thing was, you know, this guy's one for the future. And it's like, kind of hasn't really happened, unfortunately. But mm-hmm. a lot of it is how talented the roster is, honestly. So it happens. Takesh is a big one too that we should know. Yes. Uh, he's come up a lot in the chat. And I think we all know that this is a pretty simple solution with him. He just has to wrestle more. When he wrestles, yes. it's awesome. When he stands behind Don Callis, less so. So, yeah, I, think I still think there's uh, potential for him as a heel. Like, I don't necessarily yeah. buy into turning babyface again, turning babyface again. I don't buy into that. The way they've just handled his heel run is so poor. Yeah, it's it took away a lot of the things that people liked about him, which is like a mm-hmm. deliberate play. But unfortunately, it also made him less interesting by doing that. You know, it's like it's a, yeah. the fine line giving someone. Um, Stripping back the qualities people like so they'll boo him is good. Stripping back everything is less good. Let that dude wrestle. He's yeah. awesome to watch wrestle. So um, I hope we get the Takeshi to Osprey match. That'd be pretty fucking yes. cool. Let's this one here. Takeshi Joe Carter at Wembley if Kenny isn't available by then. It's, it's also, not a bad show. It's good. Uh, good idea. Still holding hope on Lee Moriarty. Need, <laughs> need the double story <laughs> investment I made in DG and Lee back in early mid 2021 Skyrocket. Were you out on, on Lee Moriarty, Charlie? Are you, you still holding on hope? Um, like I was never really that invested in Lee Moriarty to begin with. So when he kind of faded out the picture, I was just like, that's unfortunate. But I hope for his sake and for like him as a performer that and the people that like him and enjoy him, that he can pick something back up and do something in this year. But he's not really on my radar personally. Yeah, I changed my mind on him a lot. I had he had a match with Darius Martin a couple of months ago on Ring of Honor that I mm-hmm. like loved. Not that it was a great match, I just thought he looked really good in it. Yeah. And other times I watch him and I'm not convinced. It's he's clearly gifted, but I don't know if he's quite it feels like he's in the wrong place to develop also, which is an issue. Yeah. Right? It feels like he should be out there wrestling, you know, three times a week and really yep. learning his craft. Instead, he's kind of sitting around to these TV tapings and Yes. It's a tough place to uh here's one I know you're a fan of, Charlie. Cole Fletcher. Yeah, man. He's... Big big Aussie Open girls. Kinda of sad to me that they they've kind of cashed out on Aussie Open already. Mark Davis isn't even back yet and Carl Fletcher's is holding a singles title and is in a new stable and it's like well like Mark Davis is cleared. He's booked for the Jericho Cruise. Like they are wrestling together mm-hmm. on that. And he just hasn't been brought back to TV. And it's, I'm so happy for Kyle because, like, that is an awesome position to be in as a 25 year old. But you're part of a tag team that got signed as a tag team. Like, it's, yeah. it wasn't even Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis are all elite. It's Aussie Open are all elite. Like, that's what the graphic says. I, I just don't it's, get the rush. It's like, even if no, you love Kyle as a single, like, why do it now? There's so many. Look at this conversation we had here. Look how many guys are waiting. Like, mm-hmm. why would you? I don't know. Yeah, I find it to be puzzling. And I, I'm not as – I don't see in Kyle necessarily what they see, but I get why they yeah. like him. But even if I did see it, give it more time, right? Let him do the Aussie Open yeah. team for a bit. I don't know. I Just think, you know. like, he, he's tall, he's bulked up, he's got a good look, and Tony Khan saw money signs, and he's run with it. Yeah. And as a promoter, I get it. Like, 
But I think they've really missed the step by not letting Ozzy open fully show to the AEW audience what they can do. And I know Davis came in injured and then he got injured again after not being back for that long. But, for sure, yeah. but their first little run, they were wrestling fucking Jericho and Sammy and then they lost the Ring of Honor tag belts in a comedy match. Like, that's not a fair, like... That's not fair, because if they had a fucking incredible 2023 up until May, like... Yeah, oh, man. they were the front have, runners for Tag Team of the they, Year for a minute there. They were, yeah. they, they were my Tag Team of the Year until they had to relinquish <laughs> the belts. I mean, at least Kyle uh, was wrestling regularly. I'm looking here, he wrestled yes. Daniels on Christopher a couple Daniels, weeks yep. ago. Chris Daniels was an Angelico, so at least he's wrestling. I mean, there's, yeah. there's that. Yeah. Um, We'll do this last young name we'll discuss, and then we'll get out of here. Willie Uta, in or out? What do you think? Big fan or not? Oh, I like Willie Uta a lot. I just wish they would stop throwing him at the pure belt because yes. it's done in his development. Like, yeah. there's no way to sugarcoat it. Like, every time he gets that pure belt, people are down on Willie Uta again, and then he loses it, and people are up on Willie Uta. And it's just like, I, there is a common denominator here. Like, <laughs> You can fix this problem very easily by putting the pure belt on anyone else or retiring it because no one really likes it. It is stunting these young guys you keep throwing it on. I think the issue with the pure rules situation is a lot of the guys take it very literally now and they yeah. think it means you can only re you have to like just wrestle exclusively on the mat and you it's like I think it makes you as matches in like much worse. So yes. I tend to agree with you. Um I like him as a talent. I haven't loved his recent output. So, yeah, he's, I mean, he's got a lot of TV usage, though. So, they've obviously invested, and I think they're going to, uh, is indeed JJ Williams the photographer. There he is. Where is he? Where's he at here? Does very good. Willie work. Utah. He does. JJ's <laughs> the man. This is a JJ yeah. Williams. This is my Joe business behind me. Um, okay. Charlie, what would you like to promote, plug, or anything you'd like to, um... any projects coming up you'd like to discuss? I do have some cool projects. If you're a fan of tag team wrestling, my tag team top 10 of the year will come out at some point this month. It is coming. But also, more than that, if you're a fan of the Motor City Machine Guns, stay tuned for another one. Because if you like the Christopher Daniels article, this one ain't got nothing on that. This Let me tell you, one, I'm right? very yeah. excited about it. Um, other than one. that... I've been working on that for a while, right? It's been going... Oh, yes. There's a reason why it's like kind of been because I had to get my end of year stuff sorted, but I also had other reasons because I was waiting for messages and mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of work behind the scenes, but it's coming together. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, and watch along tonight, I think, for Collision. I think we're going live on the Russell Pierce channel. I think there's enough people to do it. There will be a tweet. Right. We'll find out. Follow Russell Pierce. <laughs> you'll, you, you'll see it. <laughs> I was speaking about it. I was just like, did we actually commit to that? <laughs> yeah. It's Collision's got, uh, well, you've got Garcia and Buddy. You've got um, mm -hmm. Moxley and Shane Taylor. There's some good, the, ta the tag of Ortiz. Yes. So there's some good stuff on there. Join the folks at Russell Pierce if they are doing it. If not, yes. then don't, I guess. Right? The... Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, folks, here's the deal. Tomorrow. 6.05 Eastern, we're going to be hitting play on Raw Rumble 2001 over at Late Night Grin. Um, myself and Bob, I think Manny the Hooper may be there. I haven't checked in with him, but uh, <clears throat> that'll be tomorrow. And then uh, Tuesday, Grin Grappler Fit Finley coming to you over at Late Night Ooh. Grin too. I'm excited much, for this one. Yeah, I don't know how much uh, David Finley conversation is going to, going to emerge from that. <laughs> <but> we'll... <laughs> We'll see. Maybe it will. I don't know. Um, so that's Tuesday. The rest of pure stuff, as usual, as all you know. Uh, I do not have a next video essay. Well, that's a very generous question. I do not. I have stuff working. It's very. The script process takes a real drive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. Unfortunately, we do a lot of wrestling stuff. Yes. And when you get done with a three-hour wrestling podcast, you're you're like, do I want to work on this script? Yeah. Or do I simply not? <laughs> and usually yeah. as of late, it's been not. So eventually there'll be a Samoa Joe one. Eventually. But uh <clears throat> that's all for now, folks. Please do support Charlie. Follow her there. You got the Twitter gimmick there on the screen. Sure um do. I do not have an outro or anything, so I'll just say bye and wait for this to end. Bye guys. Thanks bye. for having me. <laughs>